Chapter 7, Family Vacation. Hopefully you're all having a great day. A couple of days later on the flight to Italy. While the twins sleep in the private jet's bedroom, Anna reads her gossip tabloid across the aisle, ignoring you. This is not how I imagine our first time alone in days going. She won't even talk to me. You watch her carefully, trying to see a way in, but she keeps her focus on her magazine. So, Anna, what is you so absorbed over there? Oh, nothing. Just some mindless reading. I'm not sure there is uh, such a thing. She finally glances up from her magazine and really looks at you, making you question everything. Why did I say that? Come on, you're Sam freaking Dalton. You're smoother than that. You're talking to me now? Last I checked, you were the one avoiding me. I've tried talking to you several times over the last few days. I wasn't avoiding you. I was getting busy, or I was busy getting ready for a trip. I know, but that's why I let it slide. But now we're stuck together for a while. Let's just say I asked Ellie to make sure the boys were otherwise occupied for the first leg of our journey. What if I don't want to talk to you? That's certainly your prerogative. I won't force you. She returns to her magazine, raising it to hide her face. Them. Double agent stars single again. Chris Winters. A heart as big as his smile. Launches new, or launches new figures. Hello to my view for the next nine hours. Or you could just take a nap. I don't blame her for being mad at me. Oh my god. Sam, have you seen this? She shoves the open magazine across the aisle at you, revealing a full-page spread of the two of you at the charity gala. Everything was so right on with Anna on my arm that night, until it wasn't. It's a good thing they didn't let the cameras inside the gala. That could have been embarrassing. Anna... Would it have been so bad? I'm not embarrassed about anything that happened that night. Aren't you? Absolutely not. I may regret how some things were handled after the fact, but nothing that happened that night. Sam, he moved to seat next to her, take her hand, finding comfort in her touch. She leans in towards you, pausing just before your lips meet. Temptation surges through you, crackling with anticipation. We still have so much to talk about, and yet I can't deny how much I want her. She wraps her arm around your neck, reeling you in. The desire blazing in her eyes is clear. I want you. If this is a trick to distract me from our talk... It's not. I just need you to touch me. A request is enough for your resolve to crumble. You kiss her deeply, your tongue parting, your lips open before sliding inside. You drape a nearby blanket over your laps to hide your wicked deeds, your hand slips beneath to massage her center. Her moan guides your movements when she cries out louder, you rub harder when her hips buck, you pull back enough for her to want more. Don't stop. Her back arches against her seat, desperate for the friction only your fingers can give. You find her ear grazing your teeth against the most sensitive spot. Well, be right back. Basically, we got handsy, but it would have been enough for YouTube to get really mad. It's only moments later when your own ecstasy floods your veins in a shudder of release. And, uh... The two of you take a moment to catch your breath, steadying yourselves from the eye. Then she looks you square in the eye. So about that talk. You freeze, her words catching you off guard. You feel a spike of panic through you. All you do is nod. She's right. It's time. It's not fair to keep pushing this. What are we gonna do? I don't know. I... Hmm... I shouldn't have put you in such a terrible position. 
terrible position, meaning the way she looks at you, schooling your face not to show any emotion, your heart breaks at the same time as it hers. That's right, Anna, hate me, I deserve it. You're still gonna marry Sophia. Even after we... Yes, I... I have to. You don't have to do anything. You could leave her and be with me. I know I'm not some fancy business mogul who comes from a billion dollar dowry, but I'm good for you. We're good for each other. I'm the right choice. You are. I know you are, but I... Your heart shatters as she forces herself to face reality to break her heart alongside yours. And I can't. Why not? Because of the boys. The boys. What do they have to do with this? Everything. I don't know what you've heard about me and Sophia, but the arrangement was our parents' our idea. A way to merge our families and companies. Because it's the 19th century again. Something like that. But I've known Sophia forever. I already married for once for love. At the time, the engagement seemed like the right move. A way to secure a legacy for Mason and Mickey? Exactly. After everything we've been through with their other mom and previous nannies, I, I felt like they needed another stable parent in their lives. My dad is officially stepping down as CEO after the merger, and I'll take over for him. As long as everything goes as expected, it was an obligation I accepted. I considered it a duty to my family. I owed them that for helping me pick up the pieces after Addison passed. Then things got complicated when... when you met me. You nod at a loss for words. If I don't marry Sophia, I lose everything. It and it'd be an easy decision if I only had myself to think about. But if Robin takes over the company, Mason and Mickey would lose everything too. Dalton Enterprises, it's their birthright. Sam, I get it. I can't ask you to do something that would hurt Mason and Mickey. I think we should take a step back. You're engaged, you're marrying Sophia. Until that changes, we can't keep going the way we have been. She's right, I know she is. We have to stop. As her words wash over you, whatever was left of your heart crumbles into dust. Of course. Hmm, if that's what you want, I'll respect your wish. It's the right thing to do. It wouldn't be fair to my family, Sophia, or to you. You move back to the other side of the plane, away from temptation, but one question keeps running through your mind. Why does it feel so wrong? Your arrival in Italy goes smoothly. On your first full day, you enjoy a trip to the beach with Anna, the boys, and Sophia. After Anna helps you put on sunscreen, the two of you take a dip in the water with Mason and Mickey. Put me on your shoulders, Mom! I don't know, buddy. You're getting so big. You lift Mason on your shoulders, and pretending to fall over as he giggles uncontrollably. Uh, do you think you could carry me, Anna? I'm taller than Mason by a whole half inch. I think I can manage. Who's up for a game of chicken? Uh, we are. You're going down. You think you can handle us? Have you seen Anna in her green suit? She's gonna hawk out on you. Yeah, bring it on. Mason wrestles with, wrestles with Mickey on your shoulders, trying to knock him over into the water. Step close. You step directly in front of Anna, catching her off guard. Oh, uh, hey. While she's distracted, Mason Mickey Mason gives Mickey one last push, sending him tumbling into the water. Ah! Uh, oh, sorry, Mickey. You gotta get your head in the game, Anna. That's two out of three, but I want to be on Mom's team this time. You're about to start another round when Sophia yells over the waves. Who there? Your phone is going off. I'd better get it. Be right back. 
rushed to the shore and answered the incoming call. What is it, Robin? I'm at the beach with my family. Touchy! Straight to business, then. The due diligence report just came in. Dad wants to, sir, to review it uh, after me ASAP. So I'd be happy to tell him you're too busy fooling around if you can't come. I can't let Robin handle it alone. Not with the merger on the line. I'll be right there. The heavy sigh you hang up, then wave Anne and the boys back to the shore. Bad news. I need to look at a new draft of the due diligence report before end of today. But it's the weekend. Business deals like this don't run on the standard work week. We've got to get this out of the way so our meetings run smoothly. Robin is already there proofing it. Hopefully this will be just as quick read through and I can be back uh, with you for dinner. Called it. I know it's tough to hear, boys, but look at it this way. Your mom's business is one step closer to several billion dollars in assets. Oh, wow. What a load off my mind. Anna drops her voice to a whisper so that only you can hear. Sam, you'll need more than dinner to make this up to them. I mean it. A meal isn't going to cut it for you bailing on them again. I know. I'm trying my best here. Try harder. A wave of guilt washes over you as you watch Anna lead the boys back to the water. This is for them. It's all for Mason and Mickey. Hmm. Later that evening, after you return from the office, Anna reads her book as you pour over the merger contract scattered on the table. The floor, your lamp, anywhere, there's space. There's a discrepancy in their deferred revenue. I'll have to ask Paulo about. Yeah, I've been meaning to ask you. Where's Sophia? Mm, I'm not sure. She left the office before I did. I figured she'd head home, but... You return to sifting through your documents, searching for the right one. Here's their latest projections. They... And that doesn't bother you. She's your fiancé. I'm not saying she, you should keep tabs on her every second of every day, but it's been hours. She's gets pretty touchy any time I ask what she's up to, but no need to worry. Sophia can fit in for herself. Once again, you focus returns to your work. Revenue forecast looks a bit soft next year. Maybe with our... So are we going to talk about this, or are you going to keep ignoring me so you can work? At her tone, you set the projections to the side and look at Anna. Her arms across her brow furrowed. Anna, I know you don't understand what happened today, but it was work emergency. I had to go in. Someone in the leadership had to look over these files. Sure couldn't wait till Monday? I can see why you're upset, but if I get a jump on the upcoming workload now, I'll be able to be here more next week. But you can't get Saturday back. Do you know how hard it is to coax two heartbroken seven-year-olds to enjoy their day after it's ru been ruined? Anna, a ruined is a strong word, don't you think? No, I don't think it's strong enough. All those boys wanted was a day with you, a day with their mom. Work always intrudes on family. It was a free pass, but family never intrudes on work. When have you ever left the office for them? That's cr oh, crossing a line. Everything I do is for the family. You toss the contract on the couch, stand to meet Anna face to face. The merger is the biggest move we've ever made. I have to focus. The boys will appreciate it when they're older. I'm pretty sure the only thing they'll appreciate is all the times their mom wasn't there. I already told you, Anna, this is my legacy for them. You know what else you could... what else you told me? That your father all but missed your childhood building you this legacy. Is that what you want for them? That can't be true. I've, I've always been there for them. I... Memories of the past suddenly flash before your eyes. I hate to do this to you at the last minute, but I called... Uh, I was called in to handle emergency at the office. Can you watch the boys? 
I have an important video conference in five minutes. Can you put them to bed for me? Looks delicious, but I'm swamped today. Leave me some dinner in the fridge. I'll be back later. You collapse on the couch, knocking the contract papers to the ground. The realization comes in full force. The memories knocking the wind out of you. If only more mothers didn't have that same experience. My god, you're right. I'm... turning into my father. I swore the boys would never have to feel the pain I did growing up, but I'm just continuing the cycle. It doesn't have to stay that way. You still have Sunday. Make what time you do have count. Thank you, Anna, for calling me on my BS and for fighting for Mason and Mickey. She reaches out, pulling you into a tight embrace. You close your eyes, basking in her arms around you. I needed a good kick in the ass every once in a while. Lucky for you, I'm a good ass kicker. After a long moment, the two of you pull apart, you hold her earnest gaze. I want to do something amazing for them tomorrow, something to make up for all the times I've been gone. You can't, but I digress. Though I think you deserve a proper thank you right now. She leaves your hand on your knee, but you see the fire ignite in her eyes. I have a few ideas on how you can show your appreciation. Breath catches in your throat and you hang on her every word as she finds your ear. I'm about to shower. Perhaps you can help. After all, how else am I going to reach the dirty spots? The images overtake you immediately of your naked bodies twined together, desperate for a release. Even though literally and figuratively we said we weren't going to do this anymore because we were focused on our business and Sophia. Tempting, but I want to respect your wishes about us. You make it too easy to forget what I want sometimes. And I shares one final smile before bidding you good night and heading to bed. The weeks pass in a blur as you do your best to balance family time with impending merger. Finally, you, Robin, and Sophia's family meet at the villa to review the final contracts. Paulo finishes signing and then hands you the pin. All that's left is for you to sign, Sam. And our companies will become one. And that's everything. We're officially Dalton Russo Incorporated. About time, too. I thought I'd... Uh, it never happen. Like for you, I've already planned the perfect way we can celebrate. Let's get married. We are getting married, Sophia. Did you forget about our wedding plans for next year? That's months away. I'm saying we should get married here in Italy in two weeks. Two weeks, but that's... So soon. Isn't getting hitched a whole ordeal? That's what wedding planners are for. I already hired three more, and I contacted our family in the States. We're all set. Sophia. You should have included me in the change. Oh, you were too busy with the twins in the merger. I figured this would be a welcome burden off your plate. Now where are the boys? They're going to love my little surprise. When she calls the boys and Anna into the room, you hardly hear her announcement of the good news. All you see is the heartbreak in Anna's eyes. Congrats. I'm so happy for you too. A week later, you're having your final dress fitting at the villa while Sophia's out. Well, boys, what do you think? Will it do? Yeah, it's uh, loads better than Aunt Sophia's dress. You chuckle, you try to smile at yourself in the mirror, but can't bring yourself to even fake it. Mom, uh, Anna's calling? Mason hands you the phone, and you can't help but smile when you answer. Anna, has Sophia released you finally? Okay, we're gonna... It is French, right? Or well, it technically Italian. Mia dispers, er signora Delton. Forgive my English, I'm calling because Anna Schuler has been in a car accident. Their nurse continues speaking, but the words don't register. You feel as if your soul has left your body. 
as time ceases to exist. No, no. Anna has to be okay. I love her too much for her to lose her now. What hospital is she at? Hmm. Without further ado, thank you all for watching. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Head down the description. Plenty of things to check out there. Again, make sure to like and subscribe. Uh, with that being said, thank you all for watching. I know this was short and sweet, but remember, this is uh, basically them just taking Sam's very tiny, limited, not really imaginative um, side and putting it as a so-called story just so you would spend time and money if you selected the diamond choice. Um, and yeah, that's about it. Um, I'm just going to say the following. I grew up with no dad. And I grew up with a mother who was never around. It wasn't for legacy. It wasn't for anything money-wise. It wasn't for anything. It was for her to pump out a kid and then go off and um, get married and enjoy her life, right? And then um, when I became a teenager slash adult, you know, I got to hear about, oh, well, I was I was off working and doing what was best for you. Um, and, you know, here's the thing is... I would have rather had a mother than not. And, you know, my mom never provided to me, you know, anything like Sam provided for her kids. You know, I, I get it. My mom provided the bare necessities. But here's the thing is, is if your mother is never there to provide the bare necessities for you, um, what is the point of having a mother? Right? It's it's like having a, a butler give you your birthday in a you know in a box and going hey hey this is from your mom and no i never had a butler i just thought that would be the best analogy my my shit was you know yeah <laughs> just, i don't know what i went through was completely wild let's just put it this way if you're a mom or a dad or anything in between or you know be there for your kids as long as you can put food uh, on the table and a roof over their head be there for your kids don't miss their games Try your best to be there. Okay? Like, seriously. Have a good day.